the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. What a joyous occasion. People wonder why they call this God's country. Thank you for being here. Thank you for praying with us on this privileged moment for the Church of Ogdensburg. Special, special welcome to our soon-to-be ordained men who will uh, serve at the altar for the rest of their lives and minister to God's holy people, and certainly to your loved ones who are here to celebrate our faith together. Special welcome as well to all of our priests and, and deacons and seminarians, those who claim Ogdensburg is home, as well as those who come from uh, seminaries in uh, Josephinum, the Mount, uh, friends of those to be ordained this day. As we prepare now to celebrate our faith, let us do so mindful of the Lord's tremendous love for each and every one of us, his unconditional love. We pause for a moment, reflecting on his mercy, seeking his forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. 
O God, who have willed to provide shepherds for your people, pour out a spirit of reverence and fortitude in your church to make these your servants worthy ministers at your altar and ardent yet gentle heralds of your gospel. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me thus. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. A prophet to the nations, I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I know not how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord answered me, Say not, I am too young. To whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord extended his hand and touched my mouth, saying, See, I place my words in your mouth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness, and so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son, this day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days when he was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, declared by God high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Matthew, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Let those who are to be ordained deacons come forward. Carter Gabriel Pierce. Present. Douglas Alexander Shermer. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those concerned with their formation, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. Thanks be to God. Let the one who is to be ordained a priest come forward. Lucas Herman Gruber. Present. <clears throat> Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain this man, our brother, to the responsibility of the priesthood. Do you know him to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people, and upon the recommendation of those concerned with his formation, I testify he has been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and of our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose this, our brother, for the order of the priesthood. Thanks be to God. My sisters and brothers, these three men, Deacon Lucas Gruber, Douglas Shermer, Carter Pierce, want to make a difference. And they desire to work with others who want to make a difference in these challenging times in which we live. And they know that the greatest antidote to sin and evil in our world today is simply holiness of life. Today, there is a special need for and importance of holy deacons, holy priests, holy bishops. I'm confident that these three men will live a love of Jesus which will encourage more people to desire to know God and to seek salvation in and through his body, the church. Deacon Lucas, Carter, Doug, we're so grateful. We're so proud that you have embraced the Lord's call to serve God's people in ordained ministry. You have so generously embraced that call. 
you know that now is not the time for the timid. With much courage and persevering love, you have not just survived, but have excelled in seminary life. As the Lord told Jeremiah, hear him speak to each of you. Have no fear, because I am with you to deliver you. Men, I am convinced that an exciting and adventurous journey awaits each of you. Again, know that Jesus Christ is truly your constant companion. Zeal for souls must energize your days. Yes, the psalmist proclaims, go out to all the world and teach the nations. Alleluia. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages to teach and proclaim the kingdom. In your assignments, be it in a parish or seminary one last year, be a ray of hope and of encouragement, of faith for others. Deacon Lucas, know where, where your parishioners live. Know their family members. Celebrate their joys. Accompany them in their trials. And comfort them and their sorrows. Be eager to understand their unique struggles. Yes, dear brothers, listen to and accompany our sisters and brothers. Above all, keep their salvation uppermost in your mind and heart. Sacrifice for them. Archbishop Hughes offers some perceptive advice to the ordained. He cautions us not to hold the false conviction that the church owes a cleric special treatment because of his state in life. Men, there is no entitlement here. Don't become focused on externals and the trappings of office. Rather, focus on your interior life. We need holy leaders to lead and accompany the faithful in our time. Of moral crisis. Pope Benedict XVI once wrote, in our days when in vast areas of the world the faith is in danger of dying out like a flame which no longer has fuel, the overriding priority is to make God present in this world and to show men and women the way to God. Every sacrament you celebrate is a real encounter with Jesus, the risen one. Believe it. To a large extent, today we have lost the sacramental sense. Human nature might, might cause us to be less than attentive to the prayers and rituals that we will lead. We must not just go through the motions as mere functionaries. Cling to Christ and never forget whose you are. Something artificial intelligence will never achieve. 
your way of life should be about nurturing your relationship with Jesus and expressing that relationship in ministry. By sharing in prayer and a good conversation, we protect ourselves against resignation or mindless routine. Routineism is an affliction that can have fatal consequences for the celebration of the sacraments. Do not, do not let it pervade your ministry to God's holy people. They deserve better. You know what can wear us down even more than routine is the cynicism that arises from tedium and disappointment, which can easily turn into contempt for the faithful and weariness of the church. The temptation to give up on one's spiritually and intellectually rises up from the abyss of doubting God's faithfulness. And it devours the holy zeal with which we began the good work, as St. Paul wrote the Philippians. St. Ignatius of Antioch urged courage in the face of the tumultuous times, fidelity in teaching, and perseverance in both pastoral care of the faithful and the cleric's own life of prayer and virtue. Courage, fidelity, perseverance. Men receive the gospel in trust. Listen attentively to the word of God, ponder its meaning, live it in practice, and preach it joyfully to the faithful. In doing so, you will inevitably find resistance in the world. The easier approach will always be to adjust the gospel message to make it more acceptable to a fallen world. If you do this, you will begin to water down the challenging dimensions of that message in your own life and lead those entrusted to your care to do the same. My brothers, for the sake of loving the world in the way the Lord loves the world, become a witness to life-giving truth. Help others do the same. When you realize that you are participating in Christ's own life, even continuing Christ's own life, and that you are a transparent image of Christ, you'll understand the great dignity that is yours. And you'll be less tempted to become discouraged when ministry becomes difficult. May the Blessed Mother be a source of hope and reassurance for you in your ministry. Each of you has been raised in a beautiful family with loving faith-filled parents. We thank God for their example and the sacrifices they bear for the sake of Christ and his body, the church. Deacons and priests are ordained as cooperators with their bishop. They share in his ministry of word, sacrament, and pastoral charity. They are not independent leaders or lone rangers, but participants in the sacramental life and mission of the bishop. You will soon hear me pray, be trustworthy co-workers with the order of bishops feeding the Lord's flock. My sisters and brothers, when all is said and done, today this local church, no, the universal church, is richly blessed. And we know it. We all pray for each of these men 
as they enter this most special relationship with Jesus and with all of God's children. May they accept graciously the responsibility laid upon their shoulders and on their souls and generously give of themselves for the salvation of others. Through their ordained ministry, may God be praised forever. May God be praised. Carter and Doug. Before you proceed to the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your resolve to undertake this office. Do you resolve to be consecrated for the ministry of the church through the laying on of my hands in the gift of the Holy Spirit. I do. Do you resolve to discharge with humble charity the office of the diaconate so as to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? I do. Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience, as the apostle says, and to proclaim this faith by word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? I do. You who are prepared to embrace the celibate state, do you resolve to keep this commitment perpetually as a sign of the dedication of your life to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven in service to God and others? I do. Do you resolve to guard and increase the spirit of prayer proper to your way of life, and in keeping with this spirit and the circumstances of your life, to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world. I do. Do you resolve to conform your manner of life always to the example of Christ, whose body and blood you will handle at the altar? I do. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and to my successors? May God, who has begun this good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Deacon Lucas, before you proceed to the order of the priesthood, you must declare before the people your resolve to undertake this office. Do you resolve to discharge unfailingly with the guidance of the Holy Spirit the office of the priesthood in the presbyteral rank as trustworthy co-worker with the order of bishops in feeding the Lord's flock? 
Do you resolve to carry out the ministry of the word worthily and wisely in the preaching of the gospel and the teaching of the Catholic faith? Do you resolve to celebrate the mysteries of Christ reverently and faithfully according to the tradition of the church, especially in the sacrifice of the Eucharist and the sacrament of reconciliation for the praise of God and the sanctification of the Christian people? Do you resolve to implore with us the mercy of God for the people entrusted to you with zeal for the commandment to pray without ceasing? Do you resolve to be united more closely each day to Christ the high priest who offered himself for us to the Father as a pure sacrifice and with him to consecrate yourself to God for the salvation of all? Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Let us pray, my sisters and brothers, that God, the Almighty Father, will in his mercy pour out the grace of his blessing on these, his servants, whom he is pleased to receive into the sacred orders of the diaconate and the priesthood. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Pray for us. 
Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and kindly accompany with your help what we are about to do by virtue of our office. Sanctify with your blessing those whom in our judgment we believe are worthy to be offered for the exercise of sacred ministries through Christ our Lord. Amen. Draw near, we pray, Almighty God, giver of every grace, who will portion every order and assign every office. While remaining unchanged, you make all things new, and setting all things in order with everlasting providence, you make due provision for every age. 
To your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that your church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of her members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. As once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve your name. Thus, in the first days of your church, your son's apostles, led by the Holy Spirit, appointed seven men of good repute to help them in the daily ministry so that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and the preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. Look favorably also on these, your servants. We pray, O Lord, whom we humbly dedicate to serve at your holy altars, in the office of the diaconate. Send forth the Holy Spirit upon them, O Lord, we pray, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace to carry out faithfully the work of the ministry. May every evangelical virtue abound in them, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and the poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your precepts shine forth in their conduct, that by the example of their manner of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people. In offering the witness of a good conscience, may they remain firm and steadfast in Christ, so that imitating your Son on earth, who came not to be served but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign with him in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Thank you. 
Let us pray, my sisters and brothers, to God the Almighty Father, that he pour out heavenly gifts in abundance on this, his servant, Lucas, whom he has chosen for the office of the priesthood.
Draw near, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, author of human dignity and bestower of all graces, through whom all things progress, through whom everything is made firm, who by the power of the Holy Spirit, in order to form a priestly people, establish among them ministers of Christ your Son in various orders. Already in the earlier covenant, those arose, there arose offices instituted by mystical rites, so that when you had set Moses and Aaron over your, your people to govern and sanctify them, you chose men next in order and dignity to join them and assist them in their work. Thus, in the desert, you instilled the spirit of Moses in the minds of 70 wise men. With them as helpers, he more easily governed your people. So, too, over the sons of Aaron, you poured an abundant share of their father's fullness, that the number of priests prescribed by the law might be sufficient for the sacrifices of the tabernacle, which were a shadow of the good things to come. But in these last days, Holy Father, you sent your Son into the world, Jesus, the Apostle and High Priest of our confession. Through the Holy Spirit, he offered himself unblemished to you and made his apostles, who were consecrated in the truth, sharers in his mission. To them you added companions to proclaim and carry out the work of salvation through all the world. Now we pray, O Lord, provide also for our weakness this helper whom we need, for the exercise of the apostolic priesthood. Grant, we pray, Almighty Father, this your servant, the dignity of the priesthood. Renew deep within him the spirit of holiness. May he hold the office second in order, received from you, O God, and by the example of his manner of life, may he inspire right conduct. May he be, be a trustworthy co-worker with our order, so that by his preaching and through the grace of the Holy Spirit, the words of the gospel may bear fruit in human hearts and reach even to the ends of the earth. Together with us, may he be a faithful steward of your mysteries, so that your people may be renewed through the cleansing waters of rebirth and refreshed from your altar, so that sinners may be reconciled and the sick raised up. May he be joined to us, Lord, in imploring your mercy for the people entrusted to him and for the whole world. May the Lord Jesus Christ, whom the Father anointed with the Holy Spirit and power, guard and preserve you that you may sanctify the Christian people and offer sacrifice to God.
receive the oblation of the holy people to be offered to God. Understand what you will do. Imitate what you will celebrate and conform your life to the mystery of the Lord's cross.
now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service. And grant that, offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with a spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. 
He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Terry our Bishop, with the order of bishops, these your servants who have been ordained today as deacons and priests for the church, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained as your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O most merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We raise our hearts and voices as one, praying as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants, whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel, of the sacraments, and of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. We'd like to extend an invitation to all of you to join us downstairs in the Brajana Hall for a reception immediately after the ordination. Also ask that if you could remain in your pews just for a, a few moments after the recessional hymn ends, allowing the parents to be able to come forward. And finally, Father Gruber. Father Gruber, what a nice ring. <laughs> Father Gruber will be available for first blessings after a picture here up front. Words of gratitude. First of all, I want to thank Bishop Lucia. The bishop not only is Bishop of, of uh, Syracuse now, but as you probably know, he's also been pastor of one of our newly ordained as well as uh, vocation director here at the time that these men uh, came into the seminary. So we certainly want to thank him. He's had a busy day, and we thank him for his presence here, coming all the way north to Ogdensburg from Syracuse. So welcome and thank you, Father, our uh, bishop. And again, a, a word of, of gratitude to our, our guests, our visiting guests, uh, Father Mulcahy from uh, the Josephinum and all those seminarians and, and friends of, uh, of the newly ordained and of the Diocese of Ogdensburg. Thank you all for, for coming the distance. I um, want to thank as well our Master of Ceremonies, Father uh, Stitt and we've uh, Father Martin Klein and uh, Father Matt Conger for their uh, assistance, not only for today, but for the preparations leading up to today. I'm, I'm most grateful. Our music ministry, wow, thank you so much. A uh, word of gratitude to my brother Knights, Knights of Columbus, uh, who are here and helped prepare the, um, the uh, reception. Our Doves, the Diocese of Ogdensburg Vocation Society, uh, who are here, uh, who are always so supportive of vocations here in, in the diocese, and we're most grateful. Our greeters, uh, all the deacons who are here, those in the sanctuary assisting, as well as those in the uh, body of the church. I also want to uh, say a special word of gratitude to Father Morgan. Where'd they put him? <laughs> oh, they're front and center. <laughs> And his wonderful staff here at the cathedral for uh, always providing such hospitality to the diocesan events that take place here in Ogdensburg. I'm so grateful to you and your staff for, uh, uh, for all the work that you do. Uh, I want to say a special thank you to our moms, our dads, our grandparents, sisters, brothers of the families of the newly ordained. Um, You've provided the, the family setting where vocations come from. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I know some of uh, Father Gruba's family have come from as far away as a place called Greece. <laughs> wonderful, uh, wonderful to have you here. His aunt and his uncle, I believe. So great to have you here. I pray that the Lord be with all of you. And with you, Mr. Spirit, bow down for the blessing. May God, who founded the church and guides her still, protect you constantly with his grace, that you may faithfully discharge his duties. Amen. Amen. May he who entrusted these deacons with preaching the gospel and of serving both altar and people make you fervent witnesses to the gospel and ministers of charity in the world. Amen. And may he make you our new priest, a true shepherd, to provide the living bread and word of life to the faithful, that you may continue to grow in the unity of the body of Christ. Amen. Amen.
May Almighty God bless you all. God who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the blessing, maybe. Father, may I have your first priestly blessing. Thank you.